It's beer o'clock on Relo Craft Beer and I think I've got something really, really interesting to show you today. It's uh, from Brighton Beer and it's their fake ale of San Francisco. It's a 5% ABV beer. Beer. It's not called itself an IPA. It's not called itself... Well, it's, it has called itself a balanced IPA. Uh, we'll get it out into a glass, see what we get. But I want to kind of talk about the description of this beer a little bit before we get too far into the review go oh, look at that really straw colored beer a really straw colored beer Pardon me. <clears throat> I come from nowhere. The worst. Normally I can deal with an itchy throat on, on the channel. I've had it before in a beer review where I'm like either wanting to sneeze or I'm like you know, trying not to sneeze or <coughs> in this case cough but <clears throat> something really caught my throat then. Apologies. Whew, uh, three, <laughs> three finger white head all the haze is in the top and it's quite clear down the bottom so what we really need to do is give this beer a little bit of a whirl a little bit of a kind of a, like a shake up and what it does it creates like a tornado type thing have a look at this now it look at that look at the bottom is like hitting the bottom now and really mixing the beer up there you go job done so yeah hazy straw colored beer three finger white head aroma and it's doing exactly what it says on the tin it, it smells really balanced I, I'm not being influenced by the description on the side of the can at all but it is balanced and that's what it wants to be balanced it is very kind of not very but it's slightly wafer like like crisp kind of wafer biscuits and hints of lemon and grapefruit let's dive in cheers <clears throat> That is pretty tremendous. That is a pretty tremendous beer. Stone the Crows. Stone the Crows. It's really, really, really good. It is really good. Now, now then. <clears throat> an explanation as to what this beer is and what it wants to be. It's trying to be a balanced beer. It's trying to be a balanced beer. It's trying not to be a New England IPA. And it's trying not to be a West Coast style IPA. So New England, next to no bitterness whatsoever. Balanced off with that kind of very light malts. Loads of flavour in the middle. It's closer to a New England than a West Coast, I would say. But then the West Coast style is... A little bit of sweetness, loads of bitterness. It's kind of off, off kilter. It's not quite balanced. It's supposed to be like that. Loads of raging bitterness. So I think the best thing to do here is, is read this um, 
and, and let you decide and, uh, whether you want to pick this beer up. A beer born out of a desire to break the mould of every IPA. Now seemingly being aggressively West Coast or New England in style. Instead, we just wanted to utilise some of our favourite malt, hops and yeast to brew a super flavoursome and balanced IPA. Citroen Chinook on the hot side with a solid foundation of IBUs and heavily dry hopped with Citra, Mosaic and Galaxy. <clears throat> Let's get back, way on back, to just drinking great IPA. And there's a feeling, there's definitely a feeling in the market of, you know, I'm talking 2020, late 2020, 2021, where people of, of, of this whole talk of, of New England IPA burnout, like people literally being burnt out with this style, whenever they go to their bottle shop, there's my door, doorbell sorted. Right, I think we were talking about kind of IPA burnout, one not we, where um, we've just had years of it, New England IPA burnout. We've had years and years and years of New England IPAs being the style of beer to drink. And that style of beer now has seemed to have moved on to where craft beer was probably a little bit of a niche um, amongst a certain demographic. Now it's kind of going mainstream. And there's a lot more, even like a lot of youngsters now drinking New England IPA. So what happens naturally, I think, in, in that circumstance is that the people who were once really kind of pushing this style and enthusiastic about this style are ready to move on to the next style and ready to move on to something else. And, and so what they've tried to do here is just build a good... IPA that's not a New England and not a West Coast that it is zesty it is grapefruity and lemony it does have a little bit of bitterness but it's equally slightly sweet and malty Funnily though, if I was to choose between the two, I mentioned New England IPA earlier, there's loads of flavour in the middle, but there's also quite a nice bitterness. So it's like a mixture of, I think this has become a mountain IPA. In all honesty, I think it's become one of those kind of mountain IPA styles of beer where the idea is you're sitting on the top of a mountain and on the one side of the, uh, uh, looking out from the mountain is, is say West Coast. IPA and on the other side of the mountain as you turned around and looking over to the other coast maybe is New England IPA so you've got West Coast and New England IPA this sits in the middle does that make sense this has probably become a mountain IPA without the brewery really kind of realizing that they've created a mountain IPA but there's definitely discussion to be had here are you New England IPA fatigued? Uh, are you still enjoying New England IPA? Or are you, are you ready to move on to the next style? Which everybody seems to be talking about pilsners and lagers. It doesn't quite seem to be happening just yet. But if enough people talk about it, maybe it will happen. But I like this beer. I do. I like this beer. It's a good beer. It's a solid beer. It's very tasty. It's an 8 out of 10. An 8 out of 10 from Real Ale Craft Beer. Please put your comments in the comments box. Subscribe to our daily beer and food reviews. Give us a big fat thumbs up. Boom. Cheers.